Good evening. President Obama has compared the devastation of the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico to the terrorist attacks of 9-11. He said the leak would change the way America thought about the environment and energy. Shares in BP fell by more than 9% today and the company is facing demands from US senators to set up a compensation fund worth at least $20 billion. The president is making yet another visit to the Gulf Coast from where Mark Mardell has just sent us this report. It's the fourth time President Obama has flown to the Gulf to show he's in charge of a crisis he now compares to 9-11. He said that changed America's foreign policy profoundly. This will shape the nation's environmental and energy plans for years to come. And I'm going to be holding up that snow. While posing to persuade people tourism is not dead here, he's decided to underline just how grave this is. For the first time in his presidency, he'll address the American people live from the Oval Office. Part of his message, BP must set up an independently administered pot of money worth billions to ensure they pay up. In some ways, what we're dealing with here is unique because it's not simply one catastrophic event. It's an ongoing assault whose movements are constantly changing. That's what makes this crisis so challenging. But still, it comes ashore. In Gulf Coast, in Alabama, they still play on the beaches, even as the cleanup begins around them. The oil only turned up here yesterday, and most tourists stay on the shore. Those who venture into the water soon regret it. You, you've got it all on your feet down there. It's got it on our feet. It won't wash off. It's all over the back of the boards, and it's sticky, very sticky. No need to ask what he thinks of the oil giant. He wants all their assets seized. The idea is to seize the entire company's assets and use it for the cleanup. When pristine white sands turn to brown sludge, people are in no mood to compromise. Those who thought David Cameron's phone call to the president would soften his line on BP were wrong. He's grown ever tougher. Thank you, everybody. The president hasn't said how much the fund should be worth. Some of his allies say $20 billion. Well, the $20 billion is a figure that probably is reasonable. But how are they going to get there? You know, BP, I think, would take a very concrete step by suspending the dividend. Today, BP have come up with a new plan to sort out the mess, just meeting a deadline set by the White House. The company said it would roughly triple the amount of oil it was capturing, 50,000 barrels a day by the end of June and 80,000 by the end of July. It's bringing in two extra tankers from Europe and a pipeline more than a kilometre long from Brazil to suck the crude up from the seabed. As the oil continues to come, more damage is done. BP shares tumbled 9% today. The reduction of value in BP will show up not only in the potential drag on dividends of the company can pay to its investors, but also the company's own capacity to invest over the long term in its future. President Obama intends to turn this to wider political purpose. In a message to supporters, he's arguing reliance on fossil fuels will smother the planet, and it's time for America to have new laws curbing carbon fuels. Mark Mardell, BBC News, Alabama. Well, BP uh, has presented a new plan to capture more oil from the broken well, and as we've just heard, it says it should be able to contain more than 50,000 barrels a day by the end of the month. The failure to plug the leak nearly two months after the accident which caused it has raised fundamental questions about the future of deep sea drilling. Our environment correspondent David Shukman has more details. An oil rig supply ship returns to Aberdeen. This is one of the world's largest centres for the offshore oil industry and these are testing times. On the quay side, the vast tubes for a new oil field to be drilled in the waters off Africa. The biggest discoveries of recent years have all been in deep water. Now the accident in the Gulf of Mexico is casting doubt over future plans. With these pipes destined for another offshore well, the question facing the oil industry is whether it's now simply reaching into waters that are too deep, unable to cope when things go wrong, unable to prevent the kind of damage we're seeing right now. The oil gushing from the seabed of the Gulf of Mexico is the deepest leak so far, and inspectors are now asking what this means. Can we drill these wells safely? They're making sure that all their equipment is, is functioning exactly as it should be. It's making people go back and double check things that they've taken for granted in the past. Year after year, the oil companies produce ever bigger machines to reach the oil. 
This is Shell's Perdido platform, and this shot gives you a sense of its huge scale. For decades, oil's been extracted from shallow waters, down 400 metres or so. But in the past decade, drilling has reached 1,500 metres, about a mile. And now the rigs are probing for oil even beyond that. With scenes like this from the Gulf of Mexico, conservation groups are calling for deep drilling to be stopped. But the industry, equipped with sophisticated robots, says it can cope. But what about the costs of cleaning up? Some economists say they're tiny compared to the value of the oil that we all depend on. A trillion dollars worth of benefits is greatly exceeds any conceivable environmental costs. You'd have to have a hundred of these kinds of spills before we'd say it's probably not, probably the trade-off isn't very good right now. So there's huge pressure to find more oil, but growing concern about hunting for it in ever deeper waters. David Shukman, BBC News, in Aberdeen. So President Obama has just started his uh, fourth visit to the region. Let's go live to Florida and our North America editor, Mark Mardell. Mark, is there any sign of the pressure easing on BP and on its boss? My goodness, no, there's no sign of the pressure easing. In fact, it's just increased significantly because the boss, Tony Hayward, is up before a congressional committee later this week and they've come out with a letter to him that's harsh even by the standards that we're used to hearing. They've had a thorough, very technical investigation into what went wrong and they're accusing BP of taking shortcuts in the days before the disaster to save time and to save money, which they say increased the danger of catastrophe. They say one of BP's own engineers called it a nightmare well, that they violated industry standards, that they ignored warnings from their own staff and from contractors, and they conclude that the carelessness and complacency of BP uh, has left a heavy toll, of course, on those who died, but of course also on the Gulf reason. And that's what Tony Hayward will have to answer on Thursday. Mark, thank you very much. Mark Mardell there in Florida.